Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Season 3 of the Rule 34 Podcast. I'm Jack, joined by... Dominic Castillo. And Giovanni. Alright, so we are back here after some time. How have you guys been? Uh, I have been pretty... Not gonna lie, it's been pretty slow. I guess it's pretty much a little break because, well, you know, uh, the season's over, Lakers lost, Clippers are gone, uh... And then the other Kings, you know, they lost. Um, aside from that, uh, I've just been just, I guess, unproductive. I've been a little unproductive. Um, I'm just waiting just for my confirmation uh, whether or not I could get accepted into a, uh, a lower price dorm over at the Berkeley's. Uh, and see how that goes out because uh, at the moment spots are running out because you know there's new students coming in, the sophomores, the seniors, and you know this, uh, you know uh, how do you call it? Uh, community college transfers also coming in as well. So my chances are slim, but I will try to look for other opportunities, other options for me to get a dorm on the low because honestly the dorms over there are insanely expensive for the very small amount of space you get. But I mean, that's that's you know that's that's Berkeley. That's you know it is what it is. Uh, aside from that, um, I'm thinking about getting back into 3D modeling. Uh, I know I've already touched up on that before, but uh, I guess the motivation died off. Um, but I'll probably get back into it at some point. Um, the reason why I don't get much into it is because my family is usually around, and I don't have any other space for it. And for those who don't know, it also requires resin, which you know throws off toxic fumes which can lead to very bad things for the lungs uh but uh, I'll, I'll think about going back into that stuff uh on other notes um i re- just yesterday i watched the uh guardians of the galaxy volume three very good movie i almost uh teared up it was kind of sad not gonna lie uh i don't know if i should get into spoilers but it was a very pog movie, and I can't wait for the next installment and and stuff. Um, other than that, it's, uh, yeah, pr- pretty pog so far, pretty pog. I don't mean to disappoint you, but uh, you may not want to be looking forward to the next installment. What, what, what's with the next installment? Uh, so there more than likely will be, like, future Guardians movies. But the whole thing is, like, it's not going to have the same cast of characters. Like, that was the whole thing about the ending was, like, yeah, you know, you're not going to see or you're not going to see these group of characters together probably ever because Dave Bautista and uh, I think uh, Zoe, uh, oh, gosh, I forget how to pronounce her last name, but the one who plays Gamora. Yeah. They basically said, like, that they wouldn't want to or, like, they were retiring from their roles as uh drax and gomorrah right right especially because uh batista said like uh like if he were to ever play another like superhero he would want it that like it isn't all costumed up like how drax was having to go through all the makeup and all that yeah um and then the second thing uh james gunn is no longer going to be with uh marvel he's going to be heading up uh dc now and so oh, that means he won't be directing the guardians movies which means it won't have his sort of signature touch on the movies right, right, right so like the movies that you just saw it's like you probably aren't gonna see too much of a that sort of similar style in a sense right right, right. be like that would you have wanted the the franchise to end there on the third movie because I feel like that ending was pretty okay. Or would you rather have the story, you know, be kept, you know, expanded on? Uh, I'm actually perfectly fine with that ending. I really enjoyed that ending a lot. Yeah, I thought it was wholesome. Yeah, I, th- I thought it was really wholesome. I felt it was like the perfect write-off for those characters, you know. Yeah. Like that was just the absolute perfect ending you could have given them. Especially because, uh, I don't know if you knew, but, like, going into it, so many people were expecting, like, somebody to die, you know? Like, one of the yeah. big, one of the big name characters, they were just like, okay, well, one of them has to die in this movie. And, you know, it was such a 
refreshing sort of thing to see that like no one died you know yeah and the sort of like the only quote-unquote death you get is you know like i said you're probably never gonna see this group together again until like i don't know the next like big huge marvel movie where they bring everyone back you know because you know that's inevitable yeah but yeah i really enjoyed it i i remember the moment we finished watching the movie i said it myself i was like that is probably the greatest trilogy that marvel has ever like put out i don't i can't think of anything that touches it and uh i guess like the one thing it always will have over uh other movies too which i know you'll probably agree with me on this dom is uh its soundtrack is always going to remain like the best yeah, yeah. like no matter they always like for each movie they just always uh come out with the best soundtracks you know yeah but I feel like the third movie would have also been very good to end off because the ending, you know, uh, with playing Redbone again, you know, which was the first song that was introduced in the first movie, I felt like that was absolutely perfect to end it off. But I don't know. I, I have a bad feeling it's going to end off with like, uh, no, it's going to continue, but in like in a series format, like, you know, with like Netflix and stuff like that. Mm. Not in movies. So now you get to see like maybe like, you know, the adventures in between, you know, each character going off in, you know, in the timeline or not in, the time, in, in their own way, per se, like with uh, Quill back at home and, you know, you know, his adventures, you know, living life again at home and, uh, you know, all and all that stuff. I could definitely see something like that happen. Yeah, I think that might be happening. But I prefer a movie rather than like a series. That's just me. No, I get that. I get that. But yeah, that was a good movie for sure. Uh, how about you, Gio? What's been going on with you? Um, I've been chilling. Pretty much the same as last time we talked, I think. I've been, you know, trying to stay productive. I've been, you know, reading books. Um, I think since that time. I'm like halfway through another one right now. Um... One thing that's like on my horizon is, uh, uh, it's a new hobby. It's making rings out of from wood. Uh, I've randomly came across it on my recommended on YouTube. I watched it and I was like, oh, the steps look pretty easy to to do, and it looks satisfying, I guess. So I ordered some of some wood veneer. Um, I just need to get some sandpaper, and I think that's it. And I'll have, like, you know, take a crack at it. Uh, it looks fun. I think it looks fun. I think it's fun. Um, besides that, uh, Jack and I recently went to a Twice concert. It was two days ago on Saturday, right? Yeah. On Saturday, it was... So, it, was, it wasn't, like, life-changing, like the first time I went to see twice, but it was like it was really nice to see them again. Uh, the crowd was very energetic, active. Uh, it was really you know nice to see like the ocean of light sticks. Um, yeah, it, it was cool that they they were able to implement the light stick technology thing, where every everyone's light stick is in sync. In Korea, it's like every stadium has it, but in the U.S. it's not as common. So it was cool that they uh, made it happen. Um, what else? What else? Pretty much it. Uh, there's not much to update on. All right. Uh, yeah, similar sort of uh, thing, you know, where... Uh, I don't know, i just been... I've been trying to write recently. Uh, I got back into uh, my sort of groove, I guess you could say, earlier in the week. Um, I guess the main issue is, like, I always have a bunch of ideas to write about, but then it's like, it's always a struggle when you start trying to write about them. But uh, other than that, like Gio said, we went to that Twice concert on Saturday. It was very fun. Uh, SoFi is a 
huge stadium. Um, and it was very fun to see them there. Uh, we had some pretty good seats and a pretty good view. Uh, the only downside was uh, SoFi's like sound management wasn't the best. Like, it, I don't know, at times it was like, it was definitely hard to hear them. Like, I don't know, it felt like there was too much feedback, but it was still such a really great concert. I really enjoyed it. It was so unique, and uh, I don't think, or I think my ears were probably, like, permanently damaged after a concert like that, because my goodness, were uh, a lot of, there was a lot of screaming during that concert. But, uh, other than that, I mean, I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like, uh, uh, how how do you want to, how do I want to put it? It's like, uh, you almost in a sense struggle to do anything after, you know, like after having like such a, a, a high like moment in life, it's like afterwards you're just like, man, how am I? You almost, in a sense, struggle a bit because you're, like, you think about the high you got from going to, like, a concert like that. And then in the days after, you're just, like, how do you even replicate something like that afterwards, you know? I think it's called post-concert depression or something like that. Um, But it's usually... It's kind of like that, but it's more on, like, the sentimental side side, where you just want to go back to that thing. But, yeah. I can relate. It's kind of it feels like surreal to me. Like I was there, but I, I didn't actually feel like I was there. It was just like it just felt like it was like it's too good to be true kind of thing. I think another thing I contribute is just how quickly it flew by. Yeah. But nonetheless, it was still a very great concert. I really enjoyed it. Uh, so the SoFi Stadium is so sick. Yeah. I, I really, I really like the layout of it. It's so cool. Yeah, it, it it's really cool. Uh, it it it's pretty crazy, Dom. I don't know if you've ever seen it, but Gio and I were there and we were counting like the the levels. Uh-huh. There was about like five suites, I want to say. And Wait, like, five it, levels of suites. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah, there was like uh. I think there was one on, I don't know if it was a field level or like just above that, but then there was like, I think on the second level, there was like two levels of suites and then the top one had two levels of suites as well. It was a lot. Right, right. I mean, at the crypto, we have three, but like, I can't imagine doing five levels, like running up. That'd be crazy. Each level is probably owned by a different company. Like... um, what is it, Levy? Probably owns like two of them, max. And then the other three are probably like someone else. But it, it would be, um, having to work five different levels, that would be insane. The amount of staff you would need to operate five different levels is That's holy. Crazy. But the good thing is that like the football season isn't as long as an NBA season. So cool. I, I guess it's not that bad. Um... Jack, do you want to talk about the the movie I made you watch? Uh, sure. We could do like a short mini review of it. No, uh, what'd you think of it, man? Um, I thought it was pretty good. I definitely liked the sort of a uh, twist they threw in the movie. The movie we're talking about is uh, what's it called again, Joe? Twentieth Century Girl. Yeah, it's on Netflix. Uh, like I said, yeah, I thought it was pretty good. I liked the sort of twist involved where it was like uh they got the the guys mixed up i can't remember was it because like he was wearing the other guy's jacket that day or something like that Mm, yeah um, well the premise of the story is there's these two girls they're best friends and one of them has to fly to new york because she needs to have heart surgery but like a few days before she had to go um, was the the like this very handsome boy comes into her family store, and then she falls, and it's like the tip the typical you know K drama cliche like oh he helps me up now I'm in 
love with him, kind of thing. And she tells the the best friend that's staying in Korea, um, while I'm gone, find out everything you can about this boy and uh, email me the information because this is set in 1999, you know, just before the the new century. And the the story goes, the best friend that stayed in Korea thinks she's following the correct guy. And she's like, you know, writing down oh, how tall he is, what kind of soda that he likes, what kind of clothes he's joining. And, you know, she follows him around for a cool bit. And as it's happening, like slowly and slowly, she starts to realize. Well, she doesn't, she doesn't realize until the other best friend comes back that she was following the wrong guy. And during the whole, uh, you know, sequence of her following him, uh, she she falls in love with the boy's friend. and But when the best friend comes back from New York after her surgery, if, uh, it turns out that the two girls like the same guy and she doesn't know how to tell the best friend because she's worried about her heart, con- like her heart because she just came back from heart surgery. So she wants to be like, oh yeah, by the way, I also like the guy that you are obsessed with. And then the best friend just dies or something, right? And then, but, you know, the end of the story is really beautiful to me. Because, you know, you see, like, how the best friends, the best friend confronts the other girls, like, okay, it's it's fine, you could, like, you could, you know, have him, I don't really care, I'd rather have you as a friend than, you know, us be fighting over some kid. And then they get together, I guess, in a way, uh, but the boy has to go back to New Zealand to, you know, go back with his mom, but they made an agreement that they were going to stay in contact, and they did, but then after a year... Uh, they so the boy stops um, uh, sending you know emails to the to the girl and the girl's like oh where you've been uh, how come you haven't called or anything and time goes on and on and on and after like when she's like close to graduating from un- university uh, she starts going on blind dates and then the guy one of the guys that she goes on a blind date blind date with uh, has the same name as the guy that she loved in high school and then she breaks down she's like oh i'm gonna hate you forever because you never uh you you never contacted me ever since years go by and then she gets this invert and she gets this invert invitation to an art exhibit uh i forgot what the name of it was but when she gets there she starts seeing like memories of her high school days uh, you know because she was part of the broadcast club so everything was recorded pretty much and then as she goes to this tree display, uh, she sees that the the boy that she loved in high school passed away uh, exactly a year after um, they separated. So in 1999, they separated. In 2000, he passed away. Or in 2001, he passed away. And one of the, like, the very captivating things about the film is when she's looking at this old tape that she finds uh, of the boy... Uh, the boy says, I can't wait to see 21st century you. And obviously he never got to see that because he passed away. Um, right? And the title of the movie is 20th Century Girl. So to him, he the only memories he has is of the 20th Century Girl. And that's kind of like the point of the title. And I, dude, I, to me, I, it's pr- probably my favorite movie of all time from start to finish i was like completely captivated in the story i thought it was like a lot of fun just seeing like this girl run around being like the best best friend that she could be to her friend falling in love with the wrong guy you know a little conflict result like resolution kind of ends in tragedy and the director said i did a little bit of research on the movie the director said that the reason why she would chose this ending uh, instead of going with a very old, they lived hap- happily ever after, blah, 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 is because looking back on your first love, first loves are typically never, um, you know, fulfilled. So uh, the boy was her for first love, and he passed away so that love could never be fulfilled. And that's kind of like the whole premise of of the ending. Of You know, it's kind of like the nostalgic but also sad feelings that are associated with your first love and I, th- I thought the message was very beautiful and the actress was very is very beautiful herself and i was like jesus christ 
I'm in love. Well, yeah, that's kind of like the premise of the story, and I, I thought it was very. It's a very cute, and um, bittersweet story, I guess. Yeah, it was a pretty good movie. It was pretty good. Like I said, I I, I thought the twist was pretty cool. That like they find out that like it was the wrong, like she was getting information on the wrong dude the entire time. Uh, I will say though, uh, I told Gio this. It was uh, a bit of a struggle to push through for myself personally, just because uh, I found a a lot of certain points a bit cringy. But uh, I feel like I feel like that's something. That's, like, more of a personal problem with me than, like, an overall criticism. Because, like, I don't know. For me, it's, like, I have a big issue where it's, like, I'm watching movies or TV shows. And uh, I get a lot of uh, secondhand embarrassment, basically, when watching a lot of certain scenes. Hmm. Like, I, I don't know what it is, but, like, uh, I don't know. It's, like, sometimes it's, like, it's so bad that, like, I'll literally have to pause and, like, go do something else sometimes. Like, that's how bad it gets sometimes where I'm just like, ah. Uh, like, I, I feel like it's with everything, too. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, whether it's a TV show, a movie, whatever, it's like, there's just so much that makes me, like, physically cringe. Hmm. But I think I had a, I had a few of those moments when watching the movie, too. I, I had to stop it because I was like, yeesh. Yeah, but other than that, uh... Yeah, like I said, it was a pretty good movie with pretty, two pretty good twists, because the ending, too, was also, like, a crazy twist that, like, boom, you know, you just get out or boom, he died, you know? Mm. And it was funny, because, I, like, I saw, like, a couple, like, it always happens. Anytime I watch something, it's like I end up seeing, like, a bunch of, like, videos or, like, posts about it on social media, even if it's, like, something from, like, years ago, you know? And it's like I saw people trying to, like, theorize like whether he was still alive or something I'm like bro there's they literally showed the gravestone what do you mean he's still alive hey man it's kind of that if you don't see them die then they're not dead true Wait, yeah, that, that guy's dead that was a pretty good movie mm. what's it called uh, on the topic of a uh, school because that's where this movie took place uh geo you sort of brought up the the idea of talking about school um yeah uh i should have prepared some questions beforehand not gonna lie but the premise of this discussion that i wanted to have was just seeing how all three of us are at three very different points of our academic careers if you will um I thought it would be an interesting discussion how on how we felt about school. Because, Dominic, you're one year away from finishing, I think. Or one uh, semester away. Yeah, around there. So, so I mean, yeah. I could take more classes and graduate earlier. But, I mean, eh, I probably won't. I'll, probably won't. I'll, just, I'll, just, I'll take it slow. I'll take it easy. Um, I will admit, however... If uh, the going gets tough, uh, uh, you know I'm not, I'm not afraid of taking an extra semester or two. You know, you know it is what it is. You know, if if, if it gets difficult, if it gets because you know, you know, you know, you know, difficult. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Jack, you're returning this fall, I think, yes. according to what you told us. And me, I'm thinking about starting school, but so we're pretty much. Um, it was in 2020 when we graduated. It's been three years since um, high school ended and when college was supposed to start, according to, you know, social norm, you know, immediately after it started school. Uh, I don't know. How, how do you guys feel? Was it like, Dominic, in your, in your, from your perspective, do you think it was the best thing you you did staying in school or as soon as you ended high school. And then, Jack, uh, how do you feel about, you know, taking the gaps in between school and then continuing when you feel right? And then, same question for me, basically. Mm. Mm. 
especially because Dom, you took a majority of your years online. You know. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like this yeah. is like. This is pretty much you, my your third, final third year. Is going to be the only year you take in person potentially. You know. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So uh, I'll be honest. It, it was pretty difficult uh, at the, at the beginning. It wasn't so bad because it was just all introductory classes. It wasn't so bad. Um, but as time went on, you know, it got a little bit more difficult. And, you know, from the beginning, I was thinking of going in person because everyone was pretty much guaranteed a uh, single only indoor uh, for, for uh, uh, on-campus uh, dorms. So you would pay the basic amount for a single. You wouldn't have to pay such a you know a large amount for a single because usually single uh, rooms uh, dorms are very expensive, especially over at Berkeley, uh, which can reach usually around like five grand for a semester. So you know that in and of itself is very expensive. Uh, staying at home, however, I was able to save up money as each scholarship uh, that I was given was given to me. Uh, and thinking that it would stay for a dorm, but it didn't. So there was extra money given to me, um, thankfully. So I saved up that money. Uh, in terms of grades and such as that, it was pretty difficult. Uh, everything being online, you know, I, I've already said this countless amount of times. The experience was just not there. Everything was on Zoom. Uh, you know, when it came to, like, Discord, I mean, not Discord, uh, discussion sections, I just, I, I hated them. It was so bad. It was cringe. No one would talk. No one would turn on the camera or their mic. It would just stay quiet. There might be a couple of students who would want to, like, try to, like, you know, liven up the mood or try to, uh, I guess, participate and, you know, I guess, try it the best. But, I mean, no one else would want to just try it, just, I guess, go ahead and continue on with, like, discussions. And so it, 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 it was a situation it was not handled well. This sort of attitude and behaviors pretty much stayed the same for, like, a good year and a half. Uh, with just constant discussion sections, no one talks. And once we go back to our uh, our main room and on Zoom, you know the professor. Oh, you know what you guys talk about? What, what, how, what, what do we learn from each other? No one, no one would speak. No one would speak. There would be a couple students who would try to speak up, but you know, not not that information was exchanged between students. And you know, the professor tried their best to to do the most what they could as everything everything being online and. Uh, it it how how would I say this? Uh, it, it it was just not the best of times, and now Berkeley is pretty much forcing everybody except for I think international students to go in person. So I'm gonna be going in person. Uh, I hope everything goes fine. It's gonna be a little weird considering I'll be pretty much entering in. Uh, just I guess with no known. You know, I'm supposed to, I guess, know everything at this point about the school, but I've yet to even step foot onto the school, uh, which, you know, it's a bit of a problem, but uh, that's why I'm going to try to enter and get a dorm very early on. This is why That's why I'm applying now, uh, so as I could get a glimpse, or more than a glimpse, at least like a good walk around of, you know, the courses I'm going to take, all this stuff going in person. Um but I will have to admit that online was, uh, in, in in terms of like having to write notes and all that stuff. You know, everything was on a computer, so I could just quickly take out the Notepad app, just you know, type everything down. And uh, and as compared to uh, you know, open note tests and all that stuff, the professor tried the most to, I guess, uh, not have that happen during exams. So we would at times have um, our cameras on. Uh, and I know that other schools were pretty much worse, that you would need like a 360 degree camera or like multiple cameras in your vicinity to make sure you're not cheating. I forgot which school did this. I'm not sure if it was USC. I don't recall. But there, there were some schools that made you, you know, have video proof and like microphone proof and like and all that stuff to make sure that you're not cheating you don't have like another, you know an extra person with you or you don't have like a, a phone or a calculator or notes you know all that stuff and uh thankfully Berkeley w wasn't didn't get to that extent it did get to that extent at some point but uh not not to how other schools have gone to um 
but that's just the the situation uh, at the moment. Yeah. Man, yeah, I definitely, I definitely feel you on a lot of that. Where it was just like I don't know, the experiences didn't feel the same when it was online. Uh, in terms of my sort of perspective on the whole thing, so. For those that don't know, the whole story goes, uh, I did a full year at UCLA. I did my fall, or well, they have quarter, so I did my fall quarter. And I was like two, three weeks into doing the winter quarter when they announced that they wanted all the classes to return to, uh, return to in-person. And, uh... This was back in last year, I believe. And the reason I decided to take my break was like a mix of things. Uh, Like around the same time, my family got COVID for the first time. And it was like almost all of us, except for one of my grandmas. And the school, in the same letter that they sent out saying that they wanted, you know, classes to return to in-person, they also said that like nearly... I think it was like 2,500 students, faculty, and staff tested positive, And yet they were still like, oh, but you guys can come in person. And it was just like, why? You know, why are we coming in person when that many people are testing positive, you know? But so it was like, that was a big contributing thing. I was like, I don't, I don't want to go back in person when you're having this many people still getting sick, you know? And plus you're going to... St- you're going to put me into classes with, like, I saw one of them was, like, 200 people, you know? And then uh, the second sort of contributing factor was that it was, like, it was coming to be the end of my uh, second year, and they were like, oh, you need to, like, be making progress towards your major. But at the same time, I was like, how am I supposed to make progress towards a major that I don't, know what I want to do and you know like I don't know what I want to do as far as major I had English down just because like you know that was whatever you know like that was something I could do but it's like that's not what I really wanted to major in but it was like I just had to have like a place a placeholder in a sense and it's like even if I wanted to go with that anytime I try to take any classes that would go towards fulfilling that major they would always fill up like on day one and I wouldn't be able to get into any of them. So I was like, how am I supposed to make progress, you know, and see if this is something I do want to continue doing if I can't even get into the classes for it, you know? And then... Right. Uh, that's one of the, like, the major... I don't mean to cut you off, but that's, like, one of the major downfalls of um, the education system is, like, you need to take classes for your major. But if you can't take those classes, you have to take these random ass classes because you need to take classes and then you're just wasting your time instead of actually working towards what you want to do yeah that's definitely how i felt and like i tried whenever it came to having to take just you know variety courses i tried to take some that would at least you know uh what's it called um i tried to take some that were like you know, various sort of things to try and like see if I could build interest towards anything, you know, it's like, I just could never find anything of note to become interested in. And, you know, I took that, that break. And then, uh, at the start of this year, I basically, you know, I told my dad, I'm like, I don't want to go back to UCLA. I think I'm just going to go to LACC because, it's less of a commitment, you know, especially like financially and also like time wise. It's like it, it's going to give me more time to figure out what exactly I want to do with my life, you know. And so in the fall, I'm going to be going to LACC. But in terms of like the thoughts on school and all that and, you know, the difference between graduating three years ago, actually, to like to date three years ago. And, like, now, I don't know. It's, like, uh, I guess one of the biggest struggles I've had is, like, 
actually realizing it, you know? Because, like, the the way time passed in the pandemic, it was so long, but yet it was short at the same time, you know? And, like, right. nothing, nothing that happened is really of note during it all, you know? So it's like, yeah, we graduated, but it never really felt like we did, you know? It never right. really felt like there was this... Uh, this moment of, of like, realization that, like, you know, we graduated, we're adults now, you know, like, there wasn't, it didn't really feel like there was this big transition, you know, it's like, at times, I still, like, struggle to, like, realize that, like, I'm 21 years old, you know, three years have passed since I graduated, um, I've spent a year out of school and now it's like gonna like soon close in on like a year and a half out of school where I basically feel like I did nothing with my life you know it's like yeah I did all this stuff during it but it's like I don't know I guess you could say because of the way I grew up I was essentially made to feel like a if I wasn't doing something involving school, it felt like I wasn't doing anything worth of time or while, you know? And, like, that's one of the big reasons I hate school is because it made me feel like, you know, anything I did that wasn't involving school was useless, you know? And so it's, Mm -hmm. like, all that time I spent out of school, it was just, like, I kept trying to have... I kept trying to battle myself and, like, you know... I'm not being useless. I'm not useless for not being in school, but also it's like, I felt useless because it's like, I'm not doing anything with my life. You know, I feel that way now where it's like a lot of times I spend my days, even if I do productive stuff, I just feel like I'm, I'm worthless because I'm not doing anything of no, I'm not working a job. I'm not in school. I'm not doing anything to contribute to anything, you know? And that's why I always kind of have had a hate for school because it just, it always made me feel that way, you know, even when I was, you know, the all A student, it never felt like enough to me. And people always wanted to say, oh, that's the drive that's pushing them to be a good student. And it was like, no, I was being a good student essentially out of fear because it was like, if I wasn't doing good, what was my identity, you know? Like, I don't know, that's the way, I, that like, that's just sort of the way I feel about school. And I feel like that's what the school system does to a lot of kids, even the ones who, you know, they label as gifted and, you know, truly do some great things in the in school and in their lives later on. It's like their whole identity becomes school that it's like the moment they aren't doing anything involving it. It's like they end up feeling lost and they feel like they have no value, you know. And it especially is worse when you have people like me who it's like, they don't know what they want to do with their lives. I don't know. I I can't tell you how many times, you know, I'm up at night scared out of my mind because I'm just like, what am I doing? What am I'm going to go back to school? But for what? What am I going to study? What am I what career am I going to make for myself? You know? And I think like that's like the biggest like struggle for a lot of people, you know? And I think it's almost even a universal struggle because, you know, for example, look at someone like Dom. He's going to be entering his final year. But, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Dom, Dom, but do you also at times feel like you don't know where you're going to head? You know, even even though you've been doing all these classes, working towards this one major, it's like at times you probably still feel like what what is going to happen after all this is done, you know? Yeah, you got to be out of point. Man. What about you, Joe? Uh, uh, oh, sorry, Dom. Uh, if you're going to say something. Uh, well, yeah, no, my bad. I was going to say that. No, yeah, 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 you're right. Um, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm not sure how far I can go, if that makes sense. Like, I, I could go pretty far with the major I'm going for, but it's like, you know, like, the guaranteed chances of it, you know, of, of me being, I guess, happy with what I'm going to go with. Because I don't, I don't know if I really want to pursue what I want to pursue, you know, and, and all that stuff. But it's, I don't know. Um, 
we'll, we'll see. You know, we'll see what happens. Life, life happens, right? We'll, we'll see. What about you? Life does its thing. Um, from just to touch on what you said just now, Jack. Um, in both of the books that I read, um, they talked about this whole compounding idea that even if you move at one, if you, if you improve at one percent a day in a certain amount of time, uh, all of that would have compounded, and then you'll be in a better, you'll ultimately be in a position that you wouldn't have been in if unless you put in that work. But then, sure, that's one thing. That's like the logical approach approach to it. But then during that journey of improving one time one percent every day, you're all, you're gonna hit so many walls. In the sense, like, yes, I'm doing this, but how is this going to ultimately get me to my goal of being so on and so forth? Or how is this really helping me become who I want to become? And the the honest the honest answer is you don't really know. Like, you could be doing this thinking that, yeah, I wrote, I don't know, what, 20 pages today, or I wrote five scripts today. Cool, man. But, like... How is that gonna like ultimately get you to your goal? Like, the other stuff has to like happen for you know to like because you know there's, there's so much like there's so many variables in you know success and getting to that success, whatever success means to you, blah blah blah. I don't really know, but I don't know. I always felt like school. Looking back now, school isn't like the answer to all of our problems. Just by going to school doesn't mean that you're going to you know, uh, have it easier in life. If anything, you're just gonna have it's gonna be even more difficult, or uh, even more disappointments when you finish the four years of, uh, you know, university, come out of it with a degree, and then you're just like, all right, cool, what now? You know, it's, 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 I really hate that that Tajima. They they pretty much lied to us, saying that college is the only answer. Not really. Like Dom and I work at crypto, we make good money. Sure, during the off season we don't have work. We just get a part time job, and off of that we could probably like you know live comfortably, comfortably. And at work, our salary each year is gonna keep growing. It's just it's it's always going to keep growing. Our wages are always gonna go up unless there's like a recession or something. It's like just having a job. You have money. You can take care of yourself and be happy. That's cool. Did I need school to get at the crypto? Not really. But then for certain certain prof- professions, if you actually want to go for an actual career, I guess, if you will, um, I feel like going to a community college is not the answer. Because, Jack, based on what you said, you, you what if I want to take like a film class? But it's filled up, filled up. So now I have to go take... Uh, What's that indigenous history or whatever? Some random BS. I don't care about indigenous people. Why? I want to learn about cameras. I want to learn how to film certain the history of film. I want to learn that, but I can't because Jimmy over there stayed up until four in the morning to sign up for classes, and I happen to fall asleep. You know. Uh, but for me, right now, seeing how we're running low on time, I feel like. Film school is the only like answer for me. Uh, what I'm gonna do at film school, I don't know. How I'm, how I'm going to get the money for film school, I have no idea. But hopefully, if it's not you know hypocritical of me to say, God will, will put me in the correct path, and that's, that's pretty much it. Hmm. There's also trade schools. That's always the other thing people have said. There's always trade schools where you can learn a trade because. Those are always needed in the world, you know? Yeah. And those are more, like, hands-on. So if you don't want to just be sitting there taking notes, it's like you can go to trade school and be hands-on with the field you're learning about, you know? But, yeah, I don't know. I looked into, like, different alternatives for... Because, you know, LA Film School is here in LA, obviously. 15 seconds, by the way. Uh, never mind. (laughs) Anyways... Uh, I've been Jack, joined by Dominic and Giovanni. Thank you all for joining for this episode, and we'll catch you on the next one.